For this next episode of Fresh Produce India, I'm delighted to be joined by Tarun Arora, Director of IG International. Welcome back, Tarun. Great to have you with us today. Hi, John. It's, 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 it's an honor to be back and uh, looking forward. Great. Now, IG International is known to many of us in the business as uh, one of India's leading fresh fruit importers. Uh, previously, the company imported 100% of the fruit it sold in India, but that's all changed. Over the past two years, the group has diversified and gone into domestic fruit and vegetable production in a big way. IG has capitalized on its relationships with leading international fresh produce companies and its network of infrastructure in India to secure licenses and partnerships to bring some of the best global varieties to India and plant them on local soils. In this episode, we'd like to talk about this journey. What's driving the diversification and what are IG's future plans? Taran, I think I'm right in saying IG is now present uh, in 11 different categories in terms of uh, domestic production in India. And over the past year or so, uh, you've partnered with SNFL to grow grapes in India, uh, Israel's Bendor to grow stone fruit, Italian company RK Growers on kiwi fruit, and Turkish grower Engin Tarim with apples, uh, to name a few. And of course, uh, you already had a partnership with uh, Mountain Blue to grow blueberries in India, established some years ago. And uh, since then, you've partnered or joined forces uh, with Hortifruit. Can you explain uh, this path for the company? Uh, why have you moved to expand so quickly and aggressively? into domestic production across all these categories. Right. No, uh, I think uh, your research is very, very strong. So uh, you've already covered most of our uh, ventures. Uh, in terms of uh, our uh, strategy and how we see things in India uh, changing, so import business and the domestic business needs to go hand in hand because uh, what we see as an end goal is the consumer and the consumer, we want him to give right value uh, in terms of the quality and the profile of the product that we are offering, plus the price at which he's able to get, plus uh, the, the the consumer experience that he must get. And, and that wasn't really possible. Uh, uh, that wasn't really possible because there are challenges in the whole supply chain that we see. Uh, so each category in its own, if uh, at that point of time or that window is able to offer a value to the to our consumer domestically or imported fresh produce, it doesn't matter. That's all channels. Uh, but the whole end point is to give that value. So so that's what's driving our overall strategy. And in each category um, is, is to fulfilling uh, that uh, common goal. Mm. Uh, but I mean, you're still very committed to imported fruits. Um... But does this move into domestic production uh, reflect uh, broader trends in India's fresh fruit trade? Uh, I say that because um, India's import trade has become more difficult. Uh, the market has become dominated by commodity suppliers, which makes it harder for, for brands like your own to stand out. Uh, there are geopolitical issues facing the trade, uh, retaliatory tariffs for certain suppliers like the U.S., uh, logistical challenges too, uh, particularly shipping over long distances. So do you see imports uh, diminishing in importance for your business and, and domestic produce taking a, a much bigger share in the future? I mean, uh, yes. Uh, however, there are enough challenges in domestic uh, production too. You know, look at uh, land acquisition in India. You know, India is uh, versus some of its other pairs in terms of population. Is, is not having the same resources for land, water. Uh, but all these are extrinsic barriers, what I see. Uh, my objective really is that, one, the import's not going to diminish. I mean, uh, the reason behind that being is the market is so big. So we're talking about a, a size which is, which is, which is, which is humongous and, uh, and growing at a, at a fast pace. And not only look at the population size, but look at the median age at 27 and then look at the consumption per capita and then look at the trend change and look at something which trends and immediately changes and varies is one such product. But coming back to again, uh, I don't see imports to diminish and I don't also see at the same time uh, Indian produce to not grow. It will definitely continue to grow. However, both have their own extrinsic challenges, which are beyond our perspective. Mm. Uh, our objective is to make sure that whatever is intrinsic to us 
uh, figure it out and and deliver it from uh, from from ecosystems developed in india or outside with your partnerships and synergies that you have found out and then deliver it there to the consumer so, th- so that's really is is very very focused uh, strategy that we are on and and we don't really change ourselves uh, in terms of our strategy so so we very very focused and we really know what we need so it's a very very clear thought process and clear uh, clear mindset uh, to what and where we want to reach and you you've uh, expanded very rapidly into 11 different categories uh, and you're scaling up uh, as fast as possible uh, you're bringing in these plant varieties from all over the world and planting them all over india how do you uh, main, con- maintain control and focus over these projects uh, when you're moving at such speed uh, with so many ventures? So I think the key for that is partnerships. I mean, uh, our strategic partners are all uh, veterans into each of their growing spaces. They understand propagation. They understand uh, uh, they understand growing. They understand supply chain. They understand packaging. They understand everything. Uh, for us, uh, we understand India as a market. We already have downstream pretty sorted. Uh, we already had expanded uh, through the imported fresh business, produce business in terms of um, the cold storages. And now we have three terminals. The third one is being built up. It's massive. So, uh, and then there is also logistics. There is also then the wholesale outlets. And there is also then the retailer connections. So downstream is pretty sorted. So really, uh, for us, product is a product. Whether it comes domestically or or, or imported, it's it's, it's, it's going to go through the same supply chain, which is quite sorted. And and then on the upstream, where we have the partners, they actually control everything. So so we ha- we are marketers and sellers. So mm. so we only give them the air cover that we give them land uh, resources and facilities to be able to uh, express themselves in Indian market. And and once you give them that uh, that. Uh, that freedom and, uh, and these guys are veterans they know what they're doing so so they will grow you know so and they will grow yeah. very fast they don't make mistakes so yeah but i mean the, the challenge is there on on the upstream side of things i mean uh, what what are the sort of key challenges you face in establishing uh, those production ventures in the different parts of the country i mean is it difficult to find uh, the locations to grow and, and to acquire the land um, or hard to find the right people and agronomic expertise to to run the projects. I mean, you've talked about your partners, but you need people on the ground as well. So I'll segment it into various factors to 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 inform a few. So land in India is the biggest bottleneck. You you cannot get land, um, and and that's where we we've, we've done five years of research now over just land into each part. Mm-hmm. India has nineteen climate zones. So inside of those nineteen zo- climate zones, you can basically grow anything and everything that you like. But each climate zone falls in different periphery of land, and and that what defines the challenge of identifying and scouting and finding the right parcel of land. And then water is again uh, a big issue uh, in India, especially in the in the mountainous region because uh, mm. there's not enough water. You don't get supply of water. It's very very difficult. So you need to have the right water strategy for for you to take care of it. Soil is contaminated, uh, massively contaminated. Because if you see Indian agriculture, we've been in agriculture state. We're far ahead when it comes to fertilizers, chemicals, and all the. And most of the farmers have done the farming on the same land uh, from generations. So, so soil is quite, uh, 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 it, it's not very, very fertile, let's put it that way. And and we need to take care of that as well as a factor. And and then on the upstream, uh, you know, uh, apart from these three factors, then there are political, which are more extrinsic, you know, uh, uh, you have to be very, very certain. And then there is infrastructure in terms of road connectivity, which is very difficult in certain parts of India. I mean, today, mm-hmm. the urban areas are quite connected. Uh, but when you go into the rural areas, some parts are not as 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 well connected. So you have to make sure that how you navigate your path on that. I think these are key factors which will uh, which are very big bottlenecks. Mm. Uh, and then on top of that, you have regulatory frameworks around planting material. So planting material importation in India is very very difficult. It's one of the most difficult around the world. So so when you look at regulatory framework, you're looking at at least 12 to 18 months of just the regulatory framework and and, and cracking it. So, so it's a very, very patient uh, game, hmm. I mean, uh, to be into this. So it's not very simple. It's not very easy. Uh, however, I mean, again, from our perspective, I mean, we're very, very motivated and uh, focused on, on accomplishing what we want to accomplish. And, and we do know that this is the path for us 
and and we are we are we are okay to play this waiting game and being patient but at the same time being aggressive where required mm. and alongside your partnerships in domestic production and growing new varieties in india you've also established joint ventures in a whole host of uh, allied sectors uh, controlled environment agriculture uh, precision agriculture uh, nursery development uh, packaging and, and bin rentals uh, fruit sorting and grading can you give us a brief overview of these ventures and explain your strategy here? So that's the most exciting part, actually. I mean, uh, when you look at the allied sectors, uh, these sectors are basically when you look at any supply chain, any product, uh, you look at uh, you look at the fragmentation fragmentation of the supply chain. India is very strong on certain things and not very strong on certain things, and we do that with the global supply chain too. So I'm not talking about any product mapping from india to or let's say from kashmir to to mumbai i'm also talking about from maybe uh, vinachi to 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 mumbai right so so when you fragment and then you see the defects into the entire supply chain then that's where the uh, the 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 allied sector starts coming in when it comes to the supply chain plus also the upstream when you talk about cr when you talk about polyhouses greenhouses so you need all of that all precision agriculture or fertigation recipes there's not enough research done on each one of them uh, and that's where I like disruption uh, so much more because uh, uh, traditionally there is conventional way of handling things, but that's not the only way of handling things. There are other ways too, but then you need to be more uh, innovative into your approach. Uh, and, and there are various examples that I can cite right next to it. Uh, for example, there is a nested bin which comes for the, for the, so sending bins which are rigid from one place to another is the most uh, it's it's not sustainable and and it's it's very difficult and it's very very costly you know so now we are working on a concept of nested bins which is already prevalent in in, in, in the world level but but in india it's very very new so so this is just one example it's a small modification of how a bin would 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 uh, probably be like or manufactured like and 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 that small modification can change the entire supply chain and dynamics and complexities of the cost structures. Uh, so, so so our focus is to then break up the supply chain on a product map, look at the defects, take out those defects, see if you can optimize that, see if you can reduce the overall cost, and see what overall value you can deliver both to the consumer and your stakeholders, and also to the planet. You know, it has to be sustainable. It has to be better than uh, where it was. The carbon emission has to be less. So you have to do all of this, and 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 then it works. It, it just works. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, IG uh, remains a, a, a proudly family-owned company. Uh, you now have, uh, I think, as many as twenty-five joint ventures. How is the business structured uh, with all these joint ventures? And uh, are you looking at? new investment models in the future, um, maybe bringing in private equity partners or or even a stock market listing? Right. So IG as a parent is well funded. I mean, uh, they're, they're, uh, we just announced our results and they were probably phenomenal. And we're well funded. Uh, we have very little or uh, no debt. Uh, so IG basically funds the single family office, which owns uh, equity into these uh, uh, 27 now uh, joint ventures, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 that equity is 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 definitely managed by a fund, and it's a professional fund where uh, I'm myself engaged in, and and definitely there is uh, room for more investment in the fund uh, for doing and 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 working on disruption models uh, uh, and and adding more ecosystem, maybe go to 100, and and there are definitely multiple options there to grow. Uh, equity for each ecosystem stakeholders uh, and and bring uh, uh, bring more value uh, to the investors. So so definitely there is more room for investment there. Uh, at the same time, the parent is quite sorted and it'll remain uh, wholly owned by uh, by the IG family in a very very small setup. So so that's the strategy. IPOs, yes, uh, there are a few IPOs lined up for uh, some startups which have become very successful in our fund, and uh, you will see them in next. Uh, uh, six months to 12 months, uh, hopefully in the Indian stock exchange listed. And they've been doing very, very well. Some of our investments are 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 are, are, are excellent. And and how they're performing, it uh, it will definitely come into the IPO market soon. Right. And, and finally, um, how do you see the consumer offering uh, in India evolving for fresh produce over the next, uh, over, the, over the years to come? I think berries, berries are going to take off. I mean, it's a remarkable product. 
avocados uh, i mean so so you will see more berries and more avocados uh, at the same time the commodities will remain uh, the market movers in terms of the, the volume movers uh, so apple which is which is very large volume mover already has a has a large total addressable market uh, citrus kiwi fruit pears so these are four key uh, product hmm. profiles when it comes to fresh fruits uh and even on the on the vegetable space there are a few new new products which are coming the sweet palermo which was uh, just launched by us uh, which is which is very promising uh it sort of is changing the uh, the 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 taste profile of the consumer the millennials are trying to sort of make new things with it we're trying to do different mm. things about so so yeah so 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 offerings are changing and um, uh, another 10 years you would see the best of the genetics in india uh being offered to the indian consumer at the right price and with best of the shelf life and quality so so that's that's the key objective and i see that happening and i i really see that happening All right well i'm afraid that's all we've got time for today uh but it's been great talking to you taran as always uh thanks for sharing with us the exciting journey that ig is on as a business and uh, we wish you every success in bringing all these uh, ventures to fruition yeah Absolutely, thank you, thanks, John. It was uh, uh, it was fun, <laughs> and which is always fun, you know, talking to you is always fun. So yeah, excellent. Thank you, Taran. Thank you, thanks, John.